Welcome, I'm Mr. Steve, and this is the overview for Cracks 2.0. The 1.0 version contains the cell simulation, which you see here. This acts as a simulator, a cell fracture cutter, and a threshold. And you can easily apply all of these cuts from the modifier. Okay, and then with that object selected, you can separate the parts in one click, just like you would an actual cell fracture, okay? You've got an act, add active and add passive rigid body physics. You can grab all of these, add them to a collection called loose parts, so you can easily do your uh, select objects for the actual physics when you wanna go into the properties and add some rigid body mass or something, okay? And this is all standard and stays the same. But the upgrade, I'm going to show you now. And for your convenience, I went ahead and added in a subdivided plane. It's going to have 50 cuts on it. And if you go in to check it, you'll see all the cuts. Now, this is pretty simple. The first thing you do, and we don't do make cuts on this. This is just for the cell fracture simulation. From here, you'll hit the little plus symbol. And this is called the crush it. So what you do is you crush it. And you're going to be adding in two modifiers initially. One displace, there'll be no texture on it, and then one sub D set to two. From here, you can put level one damage on it, and you're going to be pulled right into edit mode. And the reason for that is you'll be able to come in and make your selections for your vertex group if that's what you wish. So that way, you can kind of isolate those areas and very easily you click the plus symbol and what you've done is you just added a vertex group okay and if this is selected as the active modifier when you go here to select group it'll automatically uh, jump in and and put group on here now you can just click assign v group and jump back into object mode and you now have your damage exactly where you want it and the cool thing is if you go back in vertex group you just draw in something else and assign it go back and it's there then you're going to get two different properties here two different operations okay one is going to be the strength of the overall displacement and or damage and then one is going to be your scale which is going to be very important for making this look really nice if you find that anything at any point is kind of sluggish, you could disable or bring down your sub D. Okay, you have it up here as well. And so you can control those things. Now it's important that the sub D remains at the bottom of this modifier stack. And so what you can do now is you can actually add any one of the other damage images, okay? And what we did when we clicked level one damage, it automatically added our Musgrave texture, okay? So that was very easy, it just does it for you. Now what you can do is you come down to texture, you bring down this drop down, you'll see blend clouds distorted, uh, Musgrave, and I'm just naming off the ones that are on there, Noise is, you know, one of those things you can grab as well. Uh, the Stussy, Veroni, and the Wood. And that's what this represents up here. If I want to throw a Voronai on here. I can just click Voronai, and it's going to throw the Voronai on. But I do not want the Voronai to be, um, I don't want it on everything, right? So we click here, and I'm going to make a new vertex group. And with that one selected, group 01 will now represent that that modifier. And then I'll go into the vertex select and I can maybe grab the outside edges, do whatever you want to do. You can select this and just kind of draw these in. I'm holding shift so I don't have to lose um, my selection. And now I've got a Voronai texture kind of painted in here and I'll just click assign. I want to bring this sub D down to the bottom. I jump back into object mode. I've now got the Voronai texture on the perimeter 
and you'll see here you've got more selections now. This says crush at four because that was the fourth uh, selection, just the way it's listed inside of the add-on. And this one has now got distorted noise on it. But you don't have to really worry um, about the naming conventions, just how it's listed over here. So you see uh, you've got your scales for the individual here, which is going to be pretty cool. And then you can control the outside as well. You could match these at 0.14 so they look the same, or you can kind of throw it off if you want something a little bit different. Then from here, you can actually just keep stacking these. Now, the only thing you have to do is make sure that the sub D remains at the bottom. And so if I want to put the clouds on this, it's going to be on everything, but I can just create a new vertex group and I'll put O2 right there, jump in, and maybe I want um, clouds to be kind of like behind everything. So I can go ahead and assign that uh, V group and I'll come back out. And now I'm going to have a third setting here where not only I can do the borders, I'll be able to do the background. So you can see you can overlap and kind of create distortion layers, which is really important for kind of like getting the results you want. You can get some pretty neat results. It's very basic, but you can get some very, very neat results with this. And then once again, I'm just going to bring that sub D to the bottom so it looks nice. And now let's just say I got rid of the original crush it here, which was just noise that puts on basic noise. That's why it's not listed here. And I get rid of noise. Um, I'm going to have noise still right here because the add-on is searching uh, the collections. And in the background, under the blend file, you're still actually going to have, not those collections, but under the modifiers, under, under the textures here, I'm still going to have noise, even though we got rid of that. So if I come back up to the view layer, uh, the only way to get rid of that is to go in and select orphans manually, or you can just click right here, and you'll see you have one node group, two images, one texture, two materials. And you can purge all those, and it'll remove it from the add-on. So anytime you're in doubt, you can just click this button. If nothing happens, you're good. No orphan data is to purge. And then, of course, if I was to get rid of all this, it doesn't necessarily show up. But if I went to add some more stuff, it's going to show up because this is reading those collections. It's reading the background files. So you can go ahead and purge that. And then you'll just have the Crush It mod has nothing you have to put your level one damage on it but just come back i'll have that and then i can kind of like play around with that as amazing can make water very quickly with this by the way and then i kind of bring the scale up or down and just for the fun of it i'll just do something like that and i want to bring this scale in I'll go to material preview and i'm gonna grab material and i'm just gonna search with blender kit for water there's actually a new blender kit out. I got to go ahead and download that. So we got a procedural water here. You could just drop this on. And that should take in just a moment. And now I've got water that I can actually modify right here inside the add-on. And so there's quite a few purposes for it. Um, you want like a nice glass window or ice, whatever <laughs> You can do that too. 0 0.005 should look really nice for water. And there you go. So now you've got um, a way to instantly uh, work with water inside of Blender. And you can stack this up. So if you wanted like waves or ripples and things like that, um, then we could conceptually just add another texture. And that will be the active one, as we know. And we could clean up all of the vertex groups from previously, add a new one, and add group to this. Then I could go in, or you could go in, and select, and make some different waves in here, whatever you want to do. Like that, and I'll just go ahead and assign that group. And I'll go back into object mode. And now I've got uh, whatever you want. You know, they look like ripples. Pretty decent. 
and you can kind of play around with how that ends up looking. It could be ice, whatever you want to do with it. And yes, you can animate these values. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my sub D down. And let's see what is, here's how you can identify this. So I've got crush at four, which will control that. It's just going to control this. You can do some really, uh, really cool stuff. I have some dents in the water or some, <laughs> some depressions in the water. And then the appropriate um, other, the, the noise texture, rather what's going to it is crush it to distorted noise. And I've got crush it to distorted right here. So this will uh, work the scale. So you can always figure out 100% what you're working on and what you need to select in order to make those changes. And of course, at any time, if you wanted to come in here and hit I on something and maybe move your keyframes down a touch and then play around with how this looks and then hit I on one of these again and go ahead and hit play. Uh, you'll get a neat little animation going in behind the scenes there and you can do a lot of cool stuff. Thank you for watching everybody. Go ahead and ring that bell, smash that subscribe and that like if you found this useful content and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.